One common thing that you need to do in Adobe Flash is to do some simple scripting to make it so that you can go to different sections of your Flash animation. Now we've set up three different sections. One, two, and three. We create a text and buttons layer and an actions layer. The actions layers will put all of our action script code. I can go to Windows and click Actions or I hit F9. Now one thing I like to do is I like to take this actions panel and merge it up at the top of my screen. I'll make it a little bit smaller so I can see both my stage, my actions, and also my timeline. I like being able to see all these at one time just to make it a little bit easier to work with. I usually use a little bit of a larger screen. That way I have the ability to see more information at one time. In my actions, I'm going to give it the simplest command, which is stop. Now stop is going to tell our playback head to stop moving and not to keep moving forward. If I test this, you'll see it stays on section one and never moves. That's because my playback head has stopped on the timeline and kept it from progressing any further past frame one. If I want to have code, then I'll need to attach it to the buttons to make it move to my different frames. I'm going to select a button. Choose my code snippet. Click on go to frame and stop. You'll notice it puts inside my keyframe on my actions layer. So it automatically goes in and finds that. It gives some instructions of what I want to do. Now my button already has an instance name of button2. It's going to add an event listener. You notice the event listener is in blue. This is because it's a built-in function for Flash. And so it color codes it to make it easier for us to work with and find. It also lets us know that we have a correct spelling and we haven't left anything out. Events are things that happen, interactions if you would, with our Flash movie. They occur all the time. Anytime we move the mouse, we press a key, we roll over an object. They occur and they're constantly going on. The event listener says, I want to listen for a specific event. Well, what is it listening for? Well, it's associated with button 2. And it says anytime we have a mouse event, that's a click. So we're not just talking about rolling over or anything like that. That's handled by our button object. This is specifically looking for the click. And if there is a click, now we want to do something. And this is the whole concept behind event-driven programming. When these events occur, what are we going to do? Flash has created for us a special function. FL, click, go to and stop at frame. Now this is just a function name and we can change it. There's nothing special about it. Now this tells us what frame we're going to go to and stop on. Right now it's frame 5. I'm going to change this to 30. I'm going to test my movie. Click go to 2. And notice it changes me to section 2 of my movie. So it does exactly what we expect to. The problem is what happens if frame 30 is no longer where, where section 2 was. So let's say we had a longer animation. Now section 2 is in frame 40. I click go to 2. It actually moves our frame. It actually moves our playback head. However, we don't get a chance to see that. It's still stuck in section 1 because where section 2 occurred has changed. So let's look at a small change here. I'm going to add one more layer. I'm going to call this my labels. I'm going to create an empty keyframe by hitting the F7 key. I could have also hit F6. And notice my property panel, I have a section for a name. I'm just going to call it section 2. I'm going to put one also at frame 60 where my third section is. In doing so, I now have different sections. You can see that they're specified as labels because they have that little red flag. I'm going to come back to my actions. I'm going to put section 2 in my quotes. Now one thing you're going to notice is it's going to cause a small problem. 
that it says that section 2 is not found inside of my scene. I come back to my timeline, you notice that my timeline I have a capital S where my label that I said I want to go to is a lowercase s. We're going to fix that, test, and notice that now it works. Flash is very case sensitive when it comes to scripting. So all of ActionScript is case sensitive and you have to make sure you get those correct. Let's go ahead and repeat these. I'm going to click my Go 3 button. Once again, I'm going to click Go To and Stop. Notice it adds an underscore here just to let us know. I'm going to replace the number with another label, Section 3. I'm going to click my Go 1 button. Once again, I'm going to say click Go To Frame and Stop. This one I'll just leave as Frame 1 because we're not going to move that. I'm going to go in Test. Click on frame 2, it goes to section 2, go 3, goes to section 3, go 1, and we can do them in any order that we want. If you found this video tutorial helpful, please like and share it with others. If you want to keep up with other videos that are coming out, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook. That way, you can get the most up-to-date information.